I was a developer when I started. Uh, so I started to write assembler. So I'm an old uh, IBM guy. Uh, I spent 17 years in IBM and then I spent 10 years in uh, Tibco before joining to Source Software. So uh, my name is Maurizio Canton and I run pre-sales and post-sales for uh, Source Software in Europe. Uh, and uh, I'm here to give you um, less uh, coding type of uh, presentation and more uh, pragmatic or uh, more business uh, uh, reason way uh, why you should go and do API and especially API management. So <coughs> you, you have seen these slides before. So and this is like a, uh, show how the, the API is moving uh, in uh, in the you know in their utilization, but it's also you know is I I like to call it is more API evolution. Okay, API. If you look in the past, there have been different uh, evolution of how we do things. Okay, we started with the mainframe, we moved to client server, distribute platform, uh, enterprise service business, uh, SOA service-oriented architecture, and now API, okay? It's just a way that you do different things, okay? But, you know, in the end, what you want to do, okay, is uh, always the same things. You want to do business, okay? You want to try to reach, uh, you know, have a new channels, okay? Everyone, if you look at all the enterprise company, everyone is sitting a lot of data. Okay, a lot of data, a lot of applications that are there. The problem enterprise have is to reach a new customer. Okay, they almost uh, exhausted all their traditional customer. So how how a company that sit uh, in Paris or south of France or in UK or in Italy or anywhere in the world can reach additional customer? can extend their brand, make people easy to do business with them, okay? So that is why people now are looking at the, at the API, because API make easy. I like, uh, um, you know, Keen Lane was talking about uh, the, the, old, the same type of uh, example of a company, okay? And Netflix, okay? What I like of the Netflix case, use case, is that uh, Netflix is available on 700 different devices. Can you imagine? You can, wherever you are, wherever type of device you have uh, in the world, uh, you can watch movies, streaming. That is where make it easy for Netflix to do business to share they, they, their data, and to get money, okay? The reason... Excuse me, Sorry. you should still end the field of the camera here. Just I don't move, I move too you much. Can <laughs> just not here. Okay. Thank you. Can we put a limit here? <laughs> okay, I'm going to stay here. So, the reason is that you need to, um, you know, and for example, extend your brand, so who you are. What do you do? What do you sell? Okay, in the end, uh, and uh, you know, or how I reach a new channel? Okay, how I can make easy for people to make business with me? You know, it's nice to think about. Uh, um, I'm gonna build an API. I solve a problem. Fantastic. Okay, how you survive? How you make money out of that? Okay. And the uh, new channel can be anyone. Uh, we, we heard about, uh, you know, open API is nice, but you should do internal. And that is why you have employees that you need to address. Partner, you know, sales channel, new customer. Okay? So, and that is the reason why you're looking at the API. Because that is what you want to 
create a new channel, a new community developer, reach additional people, okay? Because then you can build more apps and so on. If you think about uh, the iPhone explosion, you know, the app stores, there are too many apps, actually, at the moment, you know, to search and to understand which one is the right one for you, okay, for example, if you look at that, okay? So, and, you know, using this make easy for people to use uh, your service uh, and to combine service for other customers. I think you know, for example, TripIT. I use it, okay? And TripIT is very nice because when you book an, an hotel, book a flight, uh, you update uh, your agenda if you want, okay? You send back and say, this is your plan. Whatever you do, you combine information that arrive from different uh, company that you use, okay? And you want to create it is, uh, because you want to, as I say, having, uh, and I will repeat myself, having a new customer, okay? So, extend your brand, new challenge, new, new, new channels, uh, and uh, create thickness on your product. So you want people to start using your, 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 your products and so on. But how you do this? Okay, so you need uh, to have in place, you know, some, uh, some strong framework, an architecture, okay? Because you have uh, on one side, you have uh, your application, and on the other side, you have a uh, million of users, okay? It's not that you can think about, uh, I build an API and I just expose it. Okay, a mobile infrastructure needs some strong pillars in their architecture, some solid foundation, otherwise it will collapse. Okay, so you need uh, to think about your API as a product. Okay, you are selling something, you are selling yourself, you are selling your brand. If it fails, your company fails. Okay. It's not, it's not a game, okay? You are selling something. I create an, an, an open API and I put there. I can't think about uh, it doesn't work. Or I will not be able to provide that type of service, okay? Because people will not start using your API anymore. You are done. This is very fast and moving type of economy. And you need to be sure that what you expose is a product. So you need to have, uh, you know, some good drivers, business drivers. And you need to have, uh, you know, a strong framework in place that can manage the traffic, can manage the requests, can manage the contract side of using your API. Okay? Um, and there are some uh, best practices that I can... Um, you know, share with you from my experience uh, done in these uh, past years. Uh, uh, something that you should uh, always consider is that uh, you have uh, some existing application that you have to deal with. Okay? And this can be anything. Okay? Can be from, uh, you know, database, identity management system, can be mainframe, can be any type of application that you are running, okay? Don't forget this, because you have to deal with that. Because when you expose your API, your, your API provide a service and provide data that are managed by this backend application, okay? So, if you, let me share you some, some type, uh, some best practice uh, to consider when you are looking at the API, okay? So you have uh, two main problems to address. One is the, the skill that you have available, okay? How I build my API, what type of skill, uh, resource, uh, what type of uh, uh, is available on my enterprise. 
and uh, what type of service uh, and what type of backend I need to address. Okay. Uh, so this is very. These are two main uh, things to consider when you when you look at an API management or API solution or trying to expose API. Okay. And. Uh, Second best practice is you should always provide a sandbox. Okay, and the meaning that uh, you should make it easy for developer, customer, partners, employees to try. Okay, you are exposing an API. Your API provides a service. I want to test that to see if this is something that is useful for me. And this should be done uh, pretty easy, pretty fast, uh, without the need of uh, contacting you. But should be there available. So I can try, get the data. The data are good for me. I want to use it. I don't. OK? So the sandbox uh, is something that is quite uh, important. Um, a developer portal. Okay, how you exp how I make them aware that I have API? Okay, I can expose an open you know directory API and so on, and this is for the open world. But how I make uh, employees, partner, aware of what API I have and what type of uh, uh, what does the API? Okay, what the API does. So all the documentation. Um, what, what means also from a legal point of view using my API? Okay, there are some legal implications, um, some service agreement, uh, okay, and so on. So I need to think about to provide uh, also a, par a portal or an API catalog directory where people can look for uh, for API and, um, and search and decide if the API is the right one, OK? Um, we, we heard this in the yesterday quite a lot. Uh, and there is a, a security aspect of using APIs, OK? And we heard the, the, the word the OHA, OHA authority. Okay, API security. Very important from my point of view is uh, also the type of uh, traffic monitoring. Okay, and it's not only I need to secure the API, but think about it. you have uh, an existing IT infrastructure that manage uh, 10,000 transactions per minute, whatever. Okay, 1 million transactions per day. Suddenly, you open this IT infrastructure to the World Wide Web. And your uh, transaction rate goes up from 1 million transactions per day to 10 million transactions per day. OK? You have a good API. What happened to your existing IT infrastructure? You didn't scale that. Okay. There are very few companies that run completely in a cloud environment. A lot of companies run on-premise. So I don't scale and my transaction rate. I collapse. My business collapse. That cannot happen. Okay. There is a security aspect. There is a quality of service aspect that is, a, in the same way, very important. You need to be able to throttling. You need to be able to stop people. Okay, and this is very important. You have, a, you need to be able to monitor in the traffic. So when uh, when you reach a certain point, you stop to accept a request, uh, because otherwise your IT will collapse and your business collapse. Not only the World Wide Web, but uh, your partner, your order management system, whatever you are doing. Okay, so you need uh, 
uh, application management, you need quality service, you need caching to manage all these uh, new requests that you are coming. Okay? So this is not just building the API. And uh, where I have to point? Okay, here. So, and something important to consider too is uh, you need to tie to your API to your existing uh, IT infrastructure from a life cycle. So because uh, your data reside on your backend application, backend system, if you change your backend, uh, you need to be aware of that. So your API and your uh, applica backend application need to be tied together in their life cycle. I change my API, I don't change the backend. It's not going to work. I change the backend, I don't change the API, it's not going to work. Okay, that is a very important aspect to consider to, to provide a good service. Okay, so, <coughs> and obviously, of course, you should be able to have it is, uh, you know, on premise, on cloud, uh, because uh, you need to address a different, uh, um, you know, requirement. Okay, so uh, there is uh, no single truth. Okay, there is there is no cloud is better, on premise is better. Okay, than cloud or vice versa. You will see in enterprise normally they consider an hybrid type of environment. So you have a part uh, for, to address some objective on cloud uh, and part on premise. Okay? <coughs> so what, what we have seen now is that, you know, how you should consider to, to build a, you know, your API infrastructure, your API management part. Uh, and uh, Consider also that, um, you know, there are some aspects uh, that uh, sometimes, uh, you know, developers don't, uh, don't take in consideration. That is, for example, you know, uh, cost efficiency. These are more, uh, you know, <laughs> matter of uh, CIO or IT manager. Okay, risk management. You should be able to consider that aspect uh, too, okay? And it's obviously that if you, uh, if you have a service oriented or service platform in place, uh, it's much easier to expose this, okay? Than, uh, you know, traditional type of infrastructure, like, you know, point to point and so on, okay? So the two things goes uh, very well together, so a solid, uh, and enable backend uh, infrastructure, and then it's very easy to expose them uh, as API. Okay, so and if you if you if you know if you look at the the two different things, uh, okay, you can see that, that there are uh, very good similarity between the two. Okay, so if you look at the service platform that are some of the things that you normally use it, okay? Uh, you can add XML there as well and uh, all the other. Uh, if you look at the API, man uh, API you, you look at the you know, REST, uh, JSON and so on. But if you look together, some of these are really you know, very, very similar. And you can use uh, um, the same type, of, for example, of API. So no one say that a REST is only for API. You can use REST in a service platform as well. Why not? Okay? If you like REST, I think the guy before me didn't, but anyway. <laughs> okay? So, for example, you can use REST. You can use XML. There is no, you know, there is no... Uh, um, a dictate that uh, SOAP is the service uh, protocol 
for excellence. You can use the, you can, I have, uh, I've been working with customers that they have all the service in XML and JMS, for example, Java message service. They didn't use HTTP, for example, okay? But the, what, what the, these things give to you is uh, an enterprise uh, platform, okay? Very stable, very solid. So you can run your business, you can expose your API, you can manage them, okay? And, you know, this is what, uh, go back, so you, can, you can do. You can start from, uh, you know, planning, uh, going to sharing. And this means uh, the, the enterprise platform that you have available. Your end-to-end, -end, you are able to, to uh, manage and monitoring them uh, uh, and running them. That is the most important thing. Okay, thank you.